in the Rododio power a batch of wash. Three, two, one. We've got a new battery here from Redodio, and I have it under good authority that that is how you pronounce it, because their company rep provided a pronunciation guide for me. They actually delayed sending me a battery till they could send me something that was a unique offering. This is what they're calling their marine smart battery. An upgraded uh, BMS and uh, it's got app control via Bluetooth. I'm actually filming this uh, introduction after I've done all the testing. You'll see in the testing that uh, some of the tests it didn't ace because of protection, which I actually really like to see. It's somewhat hard to find budget batteries, especially like this, that uh, offer the benefit that this does. In a nutshell, I'll tell you what it is. It's the overcurrent protection. The sweet thing about this is it has an incredible surge capacity. You'll see that everything I throw at it, it's able to start. A lot of 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries, I'll put it on one of my heavy high surge tests and uh, it won't even start it, it'll just poop out. Cool thing about this is the BMS will allow an incredibly huge amount of surge to go out uh, to get something started. And then you'll see that if that draw continues to be above its rated 100 amps, then it will shut down within just a few seconds. I really like seeing that, especially on uh, more budget type batteries like this, because you get the surge that you need while still having the protections that you need. That's a little uh, spoiler alert, and uh, you'll see that in action coming up. Let's unbox this Rododio battery. Got a packet of uh, documentation. It's pretty premium to have a little uh, zipper bag. I quite like that. Cute sign, post bolts here. Oh, well, let's look at that. We've got our uh, terminal bolts, as well as some uh, protective caps. Here's the battery. This one is their new version, and uh, it's got the uh, Bluetooth. Another nice touch is uh, right up here on the top. Uh, we've got uh, a QR code to get the app uh, easily downloaded. And then we've also got uh, some of the critical specs listed right here, so it's easy to find, easy to see. Here's the manual. And we've got this uh, cool kind of uh, cheat sheet, tips and tricks and instructions for quick setup and storage. Heck yeah, this is uh, where it's at. Get a whole sheet of stickers. Now that is taking things up a notch. Charge voltage 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts. It is only rated for 100 amps of discharge, but it does do surge up to 500 amps for one second. That's pretty awesome. It has low temperature charging protection. Of course, they recommend charging current is 20 amps. Uh, but you can do 50 amps. There's a nice touch, a nice uh, cheat sheet for battery cable size. So you know what size wire to get uh, for your batteries. Then check this out. They've got all this uh, information for connecting things into parallel and in series with tips and tricks on how to do that successfully. And uh, even further down here, they've got different scenarios like a 4P2S configuration and a 2P2S. 2P4S, it's quite uh, comprehensive. How to rebalance the cells. Um, a lot of really valuable information. Let's see if we can add this device to the app. So we'll hit add device, add via Bluetooth. Looks like it found it. Charging right now, so we should see some information. Let's see, device info. You can see that uh, we're at a 57% state of charge. Currently charging at uh, 610 watts, 45 amps, 46 amps, somewhere right in there. Battery info, We've got uh, the name. We've got a temperature reading, how many cycles it's gone through. Looks like uh, there's firmware. And then you can come here to device controls. You can turn off the discharge. So basically shut the BMS off from uh, discharging up here at the top, which is cool. Uh, you can remove the device from the app and uh, then you can completely turn the device off. That like shuts the BMS completely down and it goes into kind of a sleep mode. It won't turn back on until you put a charger on it that uh, can wake lithium batteries up but there will be no voltage on the terminals. It's a really nice app. I think they've done an outstanding job with this. Supposedly this battery has uh, low temperature charging protection. Just as so we have a benchmark, I've got a small battery charger right here. I've got a warm 
lithium iron phosphate battery. What we're gonna do is plug this charger in. It is officially charging. It's pulling a little over 100 watts. So that's with the warm battery. That's how this charger behaves. Just took this guy out of the freezer as he saw it. I don't know if you can see, but we've got ice on the terminals right here. Nice and cold. Charger is firing up here. Zero watts coming out. Logging into the app here. It says we've got low temperature charging protection enabled. No power is going into that battery. You can come down here and uh, you can see the actual temperature in the battery, 19.4 degrees Fahrenheit. You can still see we're at uh, zero watts. In fact, uh, the charger just uh, switched up to fully charged, so it's not even attempting to charge anymore. Low temperature charging protection on the Rododio works flawlessly. This inverter is incredibly heavy. We're gonna leave it in place and just run extension cords for this next test. But uh, can this Rododio 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery power? Follow the yellow cord with me. A 120 volt mini split heat pump. Let's find out. Here it goes. All right, and uh, we've got the app open here and you can see it's pulling just over 900 watts, vacillating a little bit. This is in cooling mode. This barely started up. Uh, it will ramp all the way down to just 200 watts after it uh, gets going for a little while. So you can easily get three, four hours uh, worth of runtime on this from a single battery like that Rododio. Can this Rododio 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery run? Follow the yellow cord. Full size gas furnace. Now, before all the uh, HVAC service techs get uh, worried, this is my overflow pantry space that shares uh, this furnace closet. And I do remove all of this stuff for when this furnace needs to be serviced. Just the induced draft motor running, it's only pulling 114 watts. Let's see how it uh, behaves here momentarily when this fan turns on. All right, the fan is up to speed now. We come over here, you can see we're bouncing around the uh, 500, low 500 range. So as this uh, goes to show, at 98% state of charge, you've got over two hours of runtime, and that's assuming the furnace is running nonstop. You could uh, easily get more runtime than that if the furnace is cycling. Everyone's favorite test, can the Rododio 12 volt, 100 amp hour trolling motor battery power a batch of wash. This dryer is a gas dryer and it runs off of 120 volt power. If you look behind here, you can see that the receptacle for a 240 volt dryer is not being used. And you can see that nothing is plugged into the 120 volt outlet because everything is plugged in here. And obviously, if you follow the yellow cord, that goes back to this 3000 watt Renogy inverter charger, which is obviously getting its power from the Rododio battery. Most of the batteries, if they're gonna have a struggle, will not start a batch of wash in the dryer because when you have heavy clothes like this and you're trying to get that drum spinning, it requires a huge amount of current to get it going. Once it's going, it's good. I have high hopes for this battery because it's a trolling motor battery and it's supposed to have a significant amount of additional surge compared to your average 100 amp hour battery. Three, two, one. Started it right up, piece of cake. And if we look here at uh, the Rododio app, you can see that they we're pulling just over almost a thousand watts at the moment. 72 amps being discharged. You can see it dropped there and uh, that's because now that it's started and uh, the hot surface igniter has turned off just to spin the drum were about 400 watts, 30 amps being drawn. Batch of wash, obviously an entire load of clothes. Here we go. 
course that starts very easily because it's just filling up water. We're in the 500 watt range at the moment. We'll call it a 98% state of charge. We're gonna see how much power a batch of wash takes. All right, the washer's in spin mode. Dryer's still going too. And as you can see, we're just uh, by the 600 watt mark. Both uh, loads of wash have been completed and uh, we discharged down to 58% state of charge. So that means it took about 40% of this battery to do a batch of wash. Not too bad. And this Rododio battery power, follow the cord, a high-end gaming PC slash workstation. You can see we've got three 4K monitors here with the gaming benchmark running on that screen right there. We come down here, we've got this plug strip right here plugged into this UPS. And I've got a video coming out here soon on this. It's very, very nice. Anyway, this uh, UPS cord is plugged into this cord that's being powered by the Rododio. Just under 700 watts. Vacillating a little bit. As you can see there, it's estimating uh, just over an hour at 55% state of charge. So that means that if this was full, a uh, workstation gaming PC get pulling this much power would run just over two hours. Now, of course, if you weren't pushing it uh, to its limits and uh, you know pulling nearly 700 watts of power, uh, you obviously would get longer run times. Can this Rododio battery run a full-size household vacuum cleaner? Yep. It might cut off though. Let's see. Yep. So, it'll run it for a couple of seconds and then the overcurrent uh, protection kicks in after uh, a few seconds. Can this Rododio 100 amp hour 12 volt trolling motor battery power an electric hot plate? Find out. Pulling 1800, 1700, yeah, right around there. And it cut off. I don't know if you saw, but we were well over the 100 amps. It pulled the power long enough to, you know, do a surge, but the overcurrent protection then kicked in. So that's really good to see. And this 12 volt, 100 amp hour Rododio battery power, a microwave. Yes, the microwave's in my garage. I don't use it in my kitchen, but uh, keep it uh, out here for testing uh, for you guys. Now, microwaves uh, pull a lot of power. We've got this 3000 watt inverter, so it's more than capable of uh, powering the microwave. The weak link will be the battery, and that's why I like to do these tests. My prediction, uh, just based on other tests we've done with this, is this battery will easily be able to start the microwave running. And then, after a couple of seconds, it will trip the overcurrent protection in that battery uh, because this microwave should pull more power than the rated 100 amps of discharge on this battery. Three, two, one. It started it 150 amps plus 1900 watts, almost 2000 watts. So that's, and there it goes. Obviously that microwave is pulling uh, way more power than that battery is uh, rated for. Good to see the overcurrent protection uh, does kick in in a pretty timely fashion. The other nice thing about it is it will automatically reset momentarily here. You're going to hear my inverter start beeping when the power gets restored back from this battery. There it goes. So that's a great auto reset and uh, I really appreciate that about this battery. I also appreciate the fact that they built it to provide the surge that it needs without just immediately tripping while still being protective in nature so that in a prolonged state of overcurrent it trips before it gets too hot or causes any damage. And I like to stress that because while it will say on my grading sheet it wasn't able to run the microwave or, or some of these other things, it does get bonus points for having a good overcurrent protection. Another one of everyone's favorite tests. How long can this Rododio 100 amp hour 
12 volt trolley motor battery run my full size kitchen refrigerator here. This is my kitchen fridge. We're getting into it uh, every meal multiple times throughout the day. So this is a really good test. None of this basement fridge testing or anything like that. This is this is my real fridge here in my kitchen. How I've got this set up is uh, you can see the cable right here coming from the fridge. It is plugged into this power station right here. And uh, the reason I have a power station in between the battery and the fridge is one, I need an inverter to uh, convert the DC power to AC power. And two, sometimes I'm not right here uh, waiting for when that uh, battery goes dead. Sometimes I'm a couple hours behind and so the uh, power station can uh, see the fridge through uh, during that time. We also have the Victron Smart Shunt right here. Now this battery has its Bluetooth monitoring so we'll use that too. But uh, all the batteries I test I run through this uh, Victron Smart Shunt during this test. It is less than a 0.2C discharge test so uh, we generally get the numbers skewed to the lower end of the spectrum. We've zeroed everything out so that uh, we're ready to go. You can also see that it's 1.35 p.m. The uh, battery just shut off a few minutes ago. If you look here, it is almost 11 o'clock in the morning the following day. This uh, battery just uh, ran my full-size fridge for like 21 and a half hours, which is pretty crazy. The Victron Smart Shunt says it discharged 99 amp hours. Again, that's without being a 0.2C rate. So that, I think that's definitely a pass. That uh, wraps up the testing uh, for today. Uh, I think it kind of hits a really sweet spot. It's got enough features to really check a lot of the boxes without uh, going overboard and going super expensive. But it doesn't compromise on safety features, which is uh, really good to see. Some of the other cheaper batteries I've tested before would be kind of, you know, competitors to this. Leave me questioning when or if their overcurrent protection is ever going to kick in. So it's nice to see someone who's actually engineered something that will give you the oomph you need to get a high surge load going, like you saw with my dryer. If the load continues, for example, the microwave, it will shut it down. And I love the app. Uh, it's the best looking, most uh, developed app for working directly with a battery like this that I've used. Uh, you don't need a ton of bells and whistles, but I love uh, the controls that you have. I love the information it provides you. They've really done a good job with the app. Hopefully uh, we'll get to test uh, some more of uh, what uh, these guys offer uh, in the future. But as always, I like to hear your thoughts and uh, comments down below. So let me know what you think. Is this a valid consideration? Would you spend your own money on something like this and uh, integrate it into a system? I would, but uh, I want to hear your thoughts. I do look at all of the comments and uh, I try to respond to all of them as well. So, and uh, please consider giving us a like and a subscribe. Nobody else seems to want to take the time to connect uh, their washer and dryer to a battery and, uh, and test it out. We do that here. All we need in uh, return is a like and a subscribe and a comment. All right, catch y'all next time.